right, hey, Cody, thank you so much. And to everyone out there, thank you, uh, you know, for supporting uh, this great uh, event. You know, it's been a, a long time coming, but uh, we really are excited to have all of you guys included for these uh, next two days. We've got a lot of great things to talk about. Um, I'm here to talk to you about continuous recruiting. Uh, it's a topic that over the last few years has really been uh, brought up um, a lot as a problem. Uh, so, you know, I wanted to take a deep dive into, hey, what solutions can we, uh, can we find from this? Um, and I came up with uh, this idea of continuous recruiting, hashtag DevOps style. Um, so here's a little bit about me. Um, just a you know, quick slide. I definitely want to give props to my wife's studio, Pilates Back Bay, if, uh, if anybody's interested, right on Boylston Street. Got to give love. <laughs> um, I have some of my colleagues from Longford and Company up here at the front supporting me. Thank you, guys. Um, wanted to give a shout out to Hannah for helping me put these slides together. She's awesome. Bottom line, all right, let, let's talk about recruiting. Um, during the keynotes, you heard everybody talk about hiring. It's like the, the hashtag of the day. Um, so I want to kind of dig into it, right? What is recruiting, all right? According to Webster, recruiting is the action of finding new employees to join an organization or support a cause. It's the most widely used external mechanism for finding and attracting new employees. So who's responsible? Right here we have talent acquisition, HR on one side. We got the hiring team um, on the other side. Talent acquisition is basically responsible for sourcing, qualifying, and introducing new candidates into the process. Your engineering team, they're responsible for interviewing the interview process and decision making. The problem is these two aren't talking to one another. You know, uh, no company wants to be stuck at a critical time of innovation with a model that does not support their needs. The goal is to build out where you want to be in the future rather than to continue to operate in your current state. The challenge, reinventing our hiring practice to align with our developing Agile, CI, and D platform. Getting these two groups to talk to one another. So let's talk about the current state of recruiting. It's a reactive process. We currently act when there is a shortage. Recruiting in this capacity means we're always acting uh, shorthanded. This is a real problem. Now, if you're shorthanded, your bandwidth is already at critical. You do not have the time, resources, nor efforts to properly recruit, attract, uh, and qualify candidates. The process is super transactional currently. Recruiting is not only about finding and attracting new employees, it's about expanding your brand. We need to stop acting as take, uh, order takers. Our recruiting process needs to be viewed as more an extension of the company's sales and marketing. We educate people about our offerings and the benefits of being an employee with our group. It's not agile. There is absolutely no velocity in our current system. It's too many breaks, rewrites, pivots, waiting for approvals, not automated where we can automate. This is a result of a lack of communication and collaboration between the hiring teams and the recruiting leg. You know, there's zero transparency. Much of this comes from historical scarring. From all sides, candidates, recruiters, organization, everyone in the process acts like they're in a game of high stakes Texas Hold'em. Bottom line, it's because there's no trust or empathy between the two parties. So there's no collaboration. This is the biggest reinforcer of the current state of recruiting. The root issues stem way beyond simple collaboration. It drives into the heart of the systematic problem within my industry. The individuals involved are not really talking to each other. There is a huge loss in translation. There is no empathy, no trust, no real understanding of what is happening on each side of those walls. So why do we do it this way? It's really all we know right now. 
People are too busy firefighting to make it a priority. There's wrong ownership. Right now, it's process before talent. And it's a big fear of making mistakes. Managers are focused on results. Most of the time, they have zero, life, uh, zero cycles to focus on recruiting and interviewing. Most teams are running shorthanded, which compounds this problem. You know, process without context makes no sense to engineers. It needs to be explained. Engineers, engineering teams are more focused on velocity than protocol. Your HR teams are focused on protecting the organization. They institute policy and process over velocity. HR does not feel the, really, the pains of uh, what it's like to incur shorthanded or underqualified teams. So what's lacking? As we talked about, the collaboration, the trust, the empathy, and teaching and learning. So how did we get here? First, no acknowledge, not acknowledging responsibility. There's a general acceptance of the standard quo, business as usual. Hiring managers aren't providing the real context behind why roles are available. What the day-to-day -day workflow entails, the technical debt that exists, what plan is it to, to uh, address these issues, if there is a plan at all? Managers do not own their process. Uh, they need to know what's happening on the other side of that wall. It's a recruiter's responsibility to educate managers on the reality of the workforce. In my experience, recruiters do not command this expectation, nor understand their real value to the teams. Recruiters, you have real-time workforce uh, information that managers need to know about and understand in order to make the right decisions when hiring. HR and TA authorizes on candidates that are sourced and qualified. It's our responsibility to influence our managers when navigating through this process. Managers and recruiters do not communicate because of a lack of trust, empathy, and collaboration. And this is where I say hashtag we're all at fault, right? So that said, issue number two, the recruiting industry, the quality of, ex of experience and knowledge needs to get better. Recruiting industry explodes. It lacks the experience, training, and regulation. Communication is a two-way exchange of information. In my experience, Recruiters do not have the proper education, um, or are not properly educated in the fields they are recruiting for. The focus has been more on teaching task operations, keyword searches, et cetera. Many recruiters come right out of college with zero professional experience. How, does, how are they to communicate the expectations of a role and profession when they themselves have never experienced what that actually means? This is a critical error that has been positively reinforced by, my, um, by more, for more organizations for over the last decade. Take a look at this slide. This is from 2015. Total staffing and recruiting uh, industry topped $147 billion last year. 5.4% net year over year. Doing business as usual. The staffing and recruiting industry has a more negative <laughs> approval rating than Hillary and Trump combined. <laughs> you know, but honestly, without forcing us to change, why would we? We're making money. So bottom line is this. Look, recruiting is broken. We all know it. We all talk about it but it can be fixed. So how does this affect us? The majority of the recruiters you work with, internal, external, came out of the same system. An industry that focuses on quantity versus quality. Why? Why not? It's the way we do business. The cost of doing business this way is ridiculous, yet we accept it and move on. Today I say no. We need to provide value to our managers by supplying them with the information they need on current hiring trends, producing quality candidates, shortening the life cycle to onboard new hires, 
Introducing a proactive approach to recruiting where the full team is engaged in the process. So how do we get started to fix this industry? We first have to identify what right looks like. Collaboration. So picture this. The teams are at 110% headcount. The mentor program has been operating for the last year. It has promoted the last three new hires. Your senior engineers will be out for the second half of this week uh, attending a leadership program on managing people. The ops, the ops team is heading out later today to support their fellow colleague who's presenting at DevOps Days Boston 2018. Awesome, lunch and learn. So what is this DevSecOps thing anyways? Your team has been increasing throughput quarter after quarter. Engineers are spending over 35% of their time creating new features. Technical debt is down with plans to address some of the legacy applications. Your net performance score is up. Employees are engaged, excited, and active. HR and TA is out being brand ambassadors, and you trust they're representing your organization right. Quality engineers want to learn more about your organization, what you're doing, and how you're doing it. Congratulations, you have become an employer of choice. So how do we get there? I propose recruiting DevOps style. Collaboration. All parties need to be involved in engaging in the planning, execution, and resolution. People are engaged, productive, and most valuable when they understand the that their contributions affect the big picture, when they're able to contribute their ideas and experiences to the goal, when they receive the proper recognition for their contributions. Transparency and trust. There needs to be an openness to sharing information and having honest discussion. Why a company is carrying high levels of technical debt Managers, stop hiding from your challenges. Talk to it. Talk to people about it. Um, too many of you out there have experienced being hoodwinked, being told in the beginning what an organization is all about, as if in two weeks when you join and get under the hood, you're not going to figure it out. Need to be open about where our, our challenges are and have a plan for it. Need an agile practice. All right, the process needs to be fast and automated where we can automate it. This is all about planning. Every person involved should know what, they, what they're responsible for doing, when, and how. A teaching and learning philosophy. Focus on hiring the right DNA, and you can teach them the technical skills. Too many companies go out and hire the skill set. They go out there and get that hired gun. Regardless of the person's personality, traits, characteristics, I'm not denying that this is not necessary at times. But folks, those people are called consultants. You hire them to accomplish project-based uh, uh, assignments. Hire somebody with an incredible attitude, great aptitude to learn, and a natural inclination to solve problems. If you are a, um, if you are a solid en engineer and it's just a matter of learning a new language, teach them the new language. In a matter of months, you'll have homegrown your own rock star. Jez Humboldt talks about this in a 2014 talk. Stop hiring DevOps experts and start growing your own. Definitely check that out. Last one is empowering your people. The organization needs to focus on the end goal, hiring the right people. Everything else should come second, and there is always a solution. HR and TA, please stop handcuffing your managers. If you're not providing them with a solution to solve the problem, allow them to go figure it out on their own. So the plan. First and foremost, like any kind of transformation, you need leaders to lead the recruiting effort. There needs to be a culture of teaching and learning. You need to have a professional development uh, program in place. That's how you become the employer of choice. So step, step one, do you have leaders in leadership positions? CI and D recruiting starts at the very top. Leaders empower stakeholders to take action, managers in HR and employees. Leaders create solutions, tear down roadblocks. Leaders provide the vision and the strategy. Leaders hold people accountable for the results and to provide the, the necessary recognition. So you got leadership, you're gonna be successful. Step two. Leaders provide the strategy, the hiring teams create the plan. 
They collaborate with the TA and uh, HR departments and agencies to develop that plan. They have a very specific recruiting strategy that, on how they were going to build their high-performing teams. You need to have it in writing, and it needs to be owned and, and evaluated by the CTO or VPs. Step three, execution, right? Each member understands their responsibilities to the plan and are accountable for the results. There is a continuous feedback loop from the bottom to the top, top to the bottom. Each member is informed on key objectives. They are engaged in the process. Leaders have empowered them to take ownership. CI and D recruiting is focused on people and not process. Real leadership becomes the foundation that drives each step towards sustainable success. Wanted to post this, this uh, slide because this is something I think that's uh, very relevant and important. It talks about uh, your level, the level of leadership within an organization and the complexity of collaboration. Uh, you know, the higher the complexity, the higher the need for true leadership. This slide rep represents how important it is for both EQ, your emotional uh, intelligence, and IQ when driving complex cultural transformation. It's a good litmus test for all of you out there. Um, <laughs> Take a look at it. Where do you or your leader rank? And how complex is the transformation that you're about to take? Um, what is the commitment? Gives you a kind of an idea as to the success rate uh, of your experience. So let's talk about managers, right? And becoming the employer of choice. We painted the picture of what, uh, what right looks like, you know, the an end goal. Oops. Managers are striving to be the employers of choice. People choose you. Talent acquisition equals brand ambassadors. Your organization spends more time organizing hackathons and teaching sessions than attending hiring conferences. You're highly visible within the community, providing a ton of open source back. Your engineers are known as thought leaders and mentors in their own domain. Your candidate pipeline is full, and believe it or not, recruiters stop calling you because there's no business and you don't want to leave. This is successful DevOps recruiting. So let's discuss the DNA for a successful organization. Professional development. Create development plans for all of your uh, engineers. These are individual plans that align the goals and objectives of your engineers with the goals and vision of your organization. Engineers are craftsmen. Give them the professional training to sharpen their skills. And keep in mind, Engineers should not feel that they are being forced into management due to compensation requirements. Providing compensation, provide compensation on value, not internal equity. Big thing on, on policy uh, in my mind. Create a mentorship program for internal and external engineers at all levels, not just your juniors. Senior folks need mentors too. Hug ops. Provide Provide educational programs um, and certifications. There we go. You know, as Puppet Labs reports suggest, sorry, let me just right here. Um, providing a culture of learning and experimentation for your people, you will gain a competitive advantage in becoming the employer of choice. I want to take Google's 20% time uh, as an example. Right? With the proper structure and expectations, this provides a creative outlet for engineers and also creates new innovative products for the organization. So let's, let's be honest, guys. Change is scary and it costs money. You will face people who are more active in trying to stop progress versus offer solutions to assist in that change. Be ready to provide reason and perspective to influence these folks to become advocates. Investing in your people is the most important responsibility for leaders and organizations. Make it your, your priority. And this is how you do it, through teaching and learning. Teaching and learning is a true cultural shift for many organizations. With most shifts, it will take leadership, time, and effort to be sustaining. It is important to provide outlets for engineers to broaden their skills and knowledge. Create an environment where your teams are expected to teach new information and ideas to the group on a consistent basis. If you do not provide an outlet for learning and developing new skills, high performers will leave you. You must apply this to your recruiting process as well. Very important. 
Provide teaching sessions for your recruiters. Embed them into your teams. Build unit integrity and trust through teaching and learning. So management, it's a skill that is learned. If you take an engineer who has some leadership qualities and move them into a management role, you need to teach them how to manage. People can learn the hard way through trial and error, but this is painful and the struggle will affect everyone. Teaching and learning, it's a way of life. So team engagement, unit integrity, we rise together, we fall together, right? Collaboration is vital for the success of CI and D recruiting. Embedding your recruiters in the process, you need to build relationships with them. They, you both need to learn to speak one another's language, right? You can enroll your whole team in the recruiting um, process. They need to be out there with your HR and TA uh, teams, assisting in discussions and answering questions. Incentivize your um, teams to, with cash when they go and identify the right type of uh, person to join your organization. Make sure to properly educate them, though, on how they can be effective in the uh, recruiting process. This talks about employee engagement, right? The goal, as represented in this report from Puppet Labs, engage teams or organizational promoters. Work to create an environment for your people. They will be ambassadors of your organization, helping your HR and TA and recruiting team. How you, you know, so how can you help your recruiters solve um, or help themselves, since we are all to blame for this? Well, this is what recruiters can do. Sit in the front. To my fellow recruiters, learning is your responsibility first. Get involved with your teams. Understand the whys. It's more important than the hows. You need to attend meetups, teaching sessions, lunch and learns. Set goals beforehand on what you want to take away. And for God's sake, use Google. Your, de your dev team does. Look, when you are present and active, you will learn. So, Involvement, don't be passive, become a part of the community, ask questions, meet people, integrate. Eagerness to learn, fill in the gaps. You get to view your organization from the outside. You may be the first person to notice where change needs to be made. Take a consultative approach and act as a center of influence. Be willing to open up dialogue and expose issues with your organization on what could potentially be hindering them in their hiring efforts. Consistency. Focus on the long-term goals. Extend your, extend your responsibilities beyond that simple job order in front of you. You now have the vision, the plan, and structure are you ready to transform? Here are two columns. Take a look at them. Right off of uh, the DevOps principles. Like anything, it's important to have installed most of these values from the right-hand column in order to be able to transform successfully. Or you could be like this, you know, we do DevOps already. Just without the uh, agile stand-up CI code or any, other, uh, any of that other hipster stuff, right? Many times I hear managers talk about being a DevOps shop and as they start to talk about engineers, they're not. But they don't talk about that to the outside world, you know, and they need to. Don't be afraid of that. So in conclusion, it's all about your people, right? Change is hard, but the right leaders plan and execution, it can be done. Remember, focus on the long-term vision and strategy. People first, professional development, teaching and learning, become the employer of choice. This is successful CI and D recruiting DevOps style. My name is David Fredericks, and I'm talking about disrupting the recruiting industry. Thank you for your time. I appreciate all of your, uh, all of your attention. <laughs> Thank you.